Five o'clock does not mark the beginning of bullfights in border and Amazonian cities like Tabatinga or Leticia. The citizens must deal with other animals, as feared as the biblical plague, and more numerous than the threatened araras. They are also parrots, pericos as they are called here. At the end of the afternoon, Brazil becomes the land of the parrots, a phenomenon that has already been witnessed and can be read in documents that date from the year 1500, and it's no exaggeration. The orange-winged tuiparas take over the city trees. They're noisy visitors that find in man's company the best hotel in town. To avoid casualties, it's best to sleep in groups. The more they are, the stronger the argument against being bothered by hunters. These pericos destroy everything they find. Entire crops have been prey to their voracity, and there are million dollar losses in agriculture each year. According to an estimate made by the town council, in one half hour, approximately 20,000 guests come here to sleep. And of course, the square meter of sleeping space is fought over in beak fights. This is a tropical phenomenon that leaves whoever sees it for the first time in awe. The contrasts of Brazilian ornithology that goes from contributing winged plagues impossible to control to examples of extreme scarcity. Our next story is a dramatic but hopeful one. One of those cases in which we are about to lose a species, as with the dinosaurs, but now only due to mankind's ambition. Good morning, Antony. Everything all right? Is there any news about the Araninha? Yes. When do you see it? Today, I saw it today. What time was that? At seven. At seven. Was it with the Wakamayu Macarana? And did it stay long with the Araninha? Yes, it was with her. It was with the Araninha. And which way did it go? They headed towards Leyton. Leyton. All right. Thank you for the information, Antonio. All right, goodbye. As he does every day, Alexander Gomez has just received information about the most esteemed living creature in the area and prepares himself to keep watch over it. The biologists of the conservation project and the people of this enormous northeastern region of Brazil closely follow the steps of the only live specimen of the blue ararinha that is left. We are talking about the most threatened animal on the face of the planet, a close relative to the great blue arara that we met earlier in the same episode and of which there remains only one male specimen living out of captivity. The caatinga is its landscape and he feeds off plants that are as scarce as he is. This fugitive has been alone since 1991, a male in need of love, and that is why it has chosen the female of another species. It is coupled up with a female maracana, a more numerous group of macaws. In this carabeira tree, love is impossible biologically speaking, but heartfelt and true. These images of this desperate lover in its natural habitat are unique in the world. We have obtained them under extreme conditions after many hours of patient waiting holding them up as testimony to the resistance of these creatures, confronting those that insisted on proclaiming that there were no longer blue ararinhas living outside of captivity, and that their extinction was a consummated fact. I have just returned from verifying whether or not the blue ararinha has laid eggs. But we weren't lucky this time. If it had happened, we would have changed the eggs. Real eggs for artificial ones. But unfortunately, there were none to change. We are looking for new forms of conservation, because we are talking about the animal with the highest risk of extinction in the world. 
Only one specimen remains living outside of captivity and, and on the other hand, this is an endemic species to the Caatinga, a typical Brazilian ecosystem. It is a parrot that possesses a special beauty and we cannot afford to lose it. Its disappearance would be a very sad thing. There is just one specimen left and we're going to do whatever we have to do to recover this species. It's a paradox that the blue ararinha is on the verge of extinction because of mankind, and now only we can save them. Currently, the recovery project of this species, a project directed by Dr. Yara de Melo, tries to take advantage of the reproduction energy of this strange couple formed by the ararinha and the maracana, and introduce the eggs obtained from the same species in captivity into their nests. If this strategy were to function, the newborn chicks would be fed and educated by their adopted father, the only live specimen out of captivity, and slowly colonize the landscape of their elders. But with each day that passes, the risk of failure grows, because the fugitive that remains is 15 years old and could die at any moment, taking with it its wisdom and the last opportunity for its species. A joint effort is necessary for this work to be carried out with guarantees and celerity. The Loro Park Foundation of Tenerife, Spain, has been collaborating for a number of years with the government of Brazil in this recovery project and has invested $400,000 in it. Some say that green is the color of hope. We believe that in this case, it is undoubtedly blue. Following the example of the Loro Park Foundation of Tenerife, the population of Curaçá has become involved in this rescue operation, turning the blue ararinha into an esteemed symbol, a blue reason for continuing the struggle in a gray world. <laughs> Antonio is one of the 12 vaqueiros da ararinha, or ararinha cowboys, as the friends of these birds call themselves. In spite of being downhearted over the difficult situation this dear bird is going through, they're not giving in, and with a knife, a song, would revive their dear blue ararinha each day. There are 40 specimens that live in captivity in the whole world, distributed between zoos or private collections in the Philippines, Brazil, Switzerland, and Spain. This is the cause of its extinction, a ruthless persecution with the objective of putting this blue beauty in a cage, the blue of hope. We started today's episode in the Amazon jungle, and we're going to finish it here on the Brazilian Sertão in the mud. All my shooting companions are exactly the same as I am, lost in the mud of the Sertão, because we have come to obtain those images in exclusivity, those exclusive images of the blue ararinha right in the middle of the mating season. I borrowed this hat from my friend Antonio, this man from the Sertão, so incredible. Well, he is finished, he has completed his work of art, in homage to the Ararinha. From here, from this program, and after having become acquainted with Brazilian bird life, we hope that this wonderful creature ceases to be a mere wooden figure and continues to soar across the Brazilian skies. Our next episode will describe a nature still life, kidnapped, sold to the highest bidder. Each year, 15 million animal furs are illegally commercialized, 135 million tropical fish, 10 million snake skins, and other remains of this ecological shipwrecking. Our cameras will accompany those who, on a daily basis, fight against the mafia of endangered species in the sewers of the international market. 
field investigations among the traders of ill-treated nature. A number of people with no scruples in Brazil and Spain making credible profits from the lives of nature's creatures. And in this episode, we will try to evaluate the volume of this terrible business that negotiates with living beings and that can annually move up to 800,000 million pesetas, a volume equal to that of drug or weapons traffic. Is there a price to live? We will search for the answer during our next encounter. We'll see you then. <laughs>